Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. And today we're going to talk about the max RPMs of the uh, ship's turbines, uh, particularly in the 1980s. We're going to be able to do this uh, because we found a uh, file in the collection that uh, was listed as being one of the Chang's original files. For those of you who don't know, Chang, C-H-E-N-G, stands for Chief Engineer. The chief engineer is the head of the engineering department, which includes everything from main propulsion, like where we are, auxiliary equipment, uh, damage control and repairs. It's one of the most important jobs on the ship. And so the Chang is usually third or fourth in charge of an Iowa-class battleship. You've, of course, got the commanding officer and the executive officer, and then uh, either the Chang or the weapons officer, the, the head of the gunnery division, would likely be next in the chain of command and the other one uh, below that. And I say for Iowa-class battleships, but really that's the case for most ships out there. Often the Chang is uh, number three. So, uh, a very important guy, somebody experienced with the Navy. And uh, this particular file seems to hold a bunch of correspondence between the various Iowa-class battleships and uh, their shipyards and, and uh, other administrative bodies shoreside, particularly relating to their main propulsion equipment. And uh, it's a lot of stuff like, uh, first of all, I should say that this seems to all be dated 1987 or earlier. So interestingly, it almost exclusively lists Iowa, New Jersey, and Missouri. Wisconsin is not reactivated until 88. There are a couple of places where it talks about Iowa class, uh, and there's at least one place that lists all four hull numbers for the Iowa classes, but everywhere else it specifically just lists those three ships' names or their hull numbers, except for one place where it lists 62, 63, 64, which I think was just a typo, and they meant to put 61, 62, 63. So, I'm going to talk a little bit about what it's saying about Iowa, Missouri, and New Jersey. Sorry, Wisconsin, it doesn't seem to hold any information about uh, your propulsion plant. The really interesting takeaway, the, the stinger in this that I probably should have mentioned at the beginning of the video to get you guys to keep watching, is that it lists some of the restrictions that were placed on the equipment. There's long been a rumor out there that Missouri's top speed was limited, uh, particularly in the 80s, and some people say it was because of this damage to the turbine around 1986 when she's doing her around the world cruise. Some people have said that it is uh, from her grounding incident. And again, I, I don't know for sure. These ships were old and well used by the 1980s. Um, but it does list restrictions to her number one main engine, which is the uh, starboard side outboard one that comes from engine room one all the way aft. So there, there is proof that there were restrictions on it. It doesn't specifically say why. The really interesting thing is that there are also restrictions on Iowa and New Jersey, and they're different for each of the three ships, uh, which indicates that there are different mechanical problems on each of the three ships. Um, it, it, that is very interesting for a couple of reasons. Um, and, and I probably don't have to spell them all out for you, but I will because that's what I'm paid to do. Uh, so the first thing is that the equipment is obviously showing its age. There, there are issues with the equipment on all three of the activated Iowa-class battleships in the 80s. So even though they've got relatively low steaming miles for a ship that's at this point 40 years old, uh, they are still having issues. Some of those issues, it's referencing that it could be crew inexperience relating to the ship. Uh, for example, the, the first sheet in here is after Iowa does speed trials, uh, they write and say that there's an issue with their fuel consumption levels, and the shipyard writes back and says, no, 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 we're, we're looking at the numbers here. You're spraying too much of the fuel into the saturated steam side and not enough into the superheated steam side, and it really should be 50-50. Uh, so it was operator error in the inefficiency. Uh, do I think that the, the crew wasn't well trained or that there, there was issues with the, the crew on board? No. The, the issue is that these guys are operating 
40-year-old equipment that isn't like anything else that they're operating in the Navy. So how could they know the right way to do it? Especially during these speed trials, during shakedowns, when, when the ship is first being reactivated. Uh, so clearly that is part of the issue. But also you've got uh, Missouri, which is probably a pre-existing condition, and, and New Jersey's, which we're pretty sure was a uh, fault in manufacturing of the ships when they were first being built. So th there's a lot of stuff going on here. The other really interesting thing here is that the Navy isn't talking about this in the 80s and 90s. The Iowas are these great unbeatable ships, but actually based on these reports, the Iowas have all sorts of issues. Their propulsion plants are, are hugely problematic. Uh, Iowa pretty famously had a yard period where they had to spend all the money on the engineering plant, which did not leave enough money to do repairs to the gun system, even though uh, she was the, the gunnery expert of the Iowa battleships. Um, New Jersey's crew in the 80s chooses to go really hard into damage control. We've talked about that a lot in the past. Why do they choose to do that? Well, obviously because the ship is taking a lot of uh, damage and, and they need those skills. They're, they're practicing them constantly. Why is the ship taking a lot of damage? She's not in combat. She's old. The, the Iowa-class battleships were not as perfect as the propaganda that the Navy put out. And they were uh, really mechanically in rough shape as 40-year-old ships. And... The, the fact that these ships are so awesome and so capable and have never been replaced, uh, some of their roles have never been replaced, and yet they were not retained in service, leads me to believe that, in addition to documents like these, there are a number of other issues with these ships that led the Navy to say that they're just too old and, and worn out to keep using. So... Uh, Let's look at some of the numbers specifically. So there is a chart in here which shows in the 1980s what the uh, full power requirements are uh, to attain 95% of the design horsepower. Iowa-class battleships are designed to be able to attain 212,000 horsepower. So that's just over uh, 200,000 horsepower. But remember, this is 95%. They can overload the engines to 120%, which would be about 240,000 shaft horsepower. As far as we know, that was never attempted. And maybe there's a reason why they never attempted it, never did um, true full power trials for these ships in the 80s. Anyway, uh, it lists what the propeller RPMs should be at various displacements and drafts. So, for example, at 53,000 tons, the average draft of the ship is 33 uh, feet and 9 inches. This is listed specifically as mean draft. Remember, the Iowa-class battleships sit a little bit lower in the stern, usually about 2 to 4 feet in active service, uh, 10 feet as a museum ship. And so at that uh, light load displacement, the inboard propellers, those are the, the narrower five-blade ones, need 198 RPM, and the outboard propellers need 211 RPM. Those are the bigger four-bladed ones. And remember that, that the uh, Navy says that these ships' ideal uh, RPM is about 202. So obviously you can see that that's more or less the, the average. At a full load displacement of 60,000 tons with a mean draft of 37 and a half feet, the uh, Iowa-class battleships need 196 RPM on the inboard propellers and 204 on the outboard. It's interesting because uh, this document specifically lists this as uh, for BB-61 and 62. And on the back page, it has a separate list for BB-63. So this is where we see uh, the, what the first time in my career has been, actual uh, official primary documents that say that Missouri's speed is limited. So uh, at 54,000 tons, 34 feet of draft, 
Uh, propeller shaft number one, so that's the outboard starboard side, is 201 RPM. Propeller shafts two and three are 197, and propeller shaft number four is 208. So there is a seven RPM difference uh, between the shafts, even though it's the same propellers, the, the only difference is which turbine is feeding them. So clearly this is showing a restriction on turbine number one. That restriction is only seven RPM though. So how big of a deal is it? And interestingly, uh, all of these numbers are about one or two RPMs lower than for corresponding shafts on the other chart for the other Iowas. Uh, so, so there is a general restriction on the ship. They don't want to crank up this uh, turbine because the other turbine is uh, because the other turbine is reduced. As far as I know, the Iowa class battleships, even in World War II, never got above 31 and a half knots with the exception of New Jersey's uh, speed trials before Vietnam. We've talked about that a lot. And she was fresh out of the yard, so she was, had a clean bottom. She had just been reactivated, and she was the lightest of any of the Iowa-class battleships. So she gets up to 35 knots. The other Iowas at full load displacements never do, including New Jersey in wartime. Um, and it looks like they cannot because of restrictions that are put on them. However, these restrictions are only a couple of RPMs, so I, that can't be translating to more than a couple of knots. It does seem like these ships should still be capable of 30 or 31 knots under uh, normal conditions. Now, like I said, this is a series of uh, correspondence, and it seems like these numbers change over the 80s. So like earlier on, when the Navy is still figuring out how the Iowas work, the, the numbers are different from as the various Iowas are brought online and they actually get operating experience back into the fleet. Oh, and it's also interesting, like I said, this correspondence is specifically between, say, Iowa and Newport News Navy Yard, but they CC the other battleships on it so that and the responses so that they can see it. And so our Chang, a Commander Ryan, no relation, puts all of this into a file folder so that he's got it all. And, and presumably, because it's still on the ship, it was something that he passed down to the guy who relieved him and, and whoever the last Chang was. I'm not sure if it was Ryan or if it was someone else. Like I said, th this seems to stop in 86 or 87. Um, so he probably was our mid 80s Chang, although I haven't looked him up yet. Um, it was clearly left on board as a pass down log so that when the next, when the ship is reactivated, which was something that the ship's crew thought was going to happen in the 90s, uh, but the Navy maybe didn't think so, but that this would be there for him to find and read through and be like, oh, okay, this is what we're supposed to do. Uh, so this one is uh, dated February of 1987, and it is uh, specifically for Iowa. And it lists um, that at, uh, let's say, lo light load displacement, 53,000 tons, 33 foot, 9 inches. Uh, shaft numbers 1 and 4 should do 207 RPMs. Shaft number 2, 197. Shaft number 3 is listed out separately. It's not 2 and 3 like it was in the previous chart. Uh, also 97. As we get up to higher speeds, it's 60,000 tons, 37 and a half foot draft. 1 and 4, which are the outboard 2, the ones that Missouri had issues with um, are the same on Iowa, they're 201, but number two and three, the inboard ones, are different. Uh, for number two, max RPM is only 192. Uh, for number five, max RPM is 195. So clearly in engine room number three, main engine number two, Iowa had some sort of uh, engineering issue doesn't seem to have been an issue throughout the whole 80s, but at least at one time, they had an issue that limited her speed. Likewise, New Jersey had a known issue with engine number three and engine room number four. Uh, so both Iowa and Missouri, they were turbine issues. And there have been some, uh, there, there have been some rumors 
based on both the Iowa class and the Midway class carriers that had the same power plant. The uh, General Electric equipment was not quite as good as the uh, Westinghouse equipment, and that's why the GE equipped uh, Franklin Roosevelt is decommissioned, but the Westinghouse equipped Coral Sea and Midway are retained. And likewise, we see the two GE battleships have issues with their turbines. Uh, and New Jersey has a limitation because of uh, overheating issues. And we know that that is because one of the uh, reduction gears is one one hundredth of an inch out of spec, which causes her to uh, overheat and blow bearings. So her uh, main engine three and engine room number four has a restriction on it. And so all three of the Iowas in the 80s, at least at one time or another, have restrictions on their engineering plants. And the Navy chooses rather than to do some sort of really expensive uh, maintenance work, the Navy just chooses to hide it under the rug and, and put these restrictions on them in these uh, internal documents. But it shows that the ships were not capable of all of their design aspects during their operations in the 80s. So, after all of this information, do you think the Iowa class should still be reactivated? Or do you think they're serving their nations better as museum ships? Let us know in the comment section down below. Is it worth the money to fix all of these problems, if it's even possible to fix equipment 80 years old like this? Uh, or do you think their time has come and gone? Let us know down below. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your support. It allows us to do this sort of research. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about the museum and our channel. Thanks for watching.